Hey, it's John and Kayla here to give you a complete tour of our brand new 2024 Integra Ethos on the Ram ProMaster 3500 chassis. We picked it up in November of 2023 from Tony down at Blue Compass RV in Latham, New York. Let's jump into it. All right, so like Kayla said, this is the Integra Ethos. So you're probably wondering why we included Jayco Swift in the video title. And the reason for that is because these are nearly identical. Jayco actually acquired Integra, so they're the parent company. So the main difference between Jayco and Integra is Jayco has their hands in a bunch of different cookie jars from towables, fifth wheels, drivables, whereas Integra, they solely deal with drivable motorhomes. The benefit to that is they know how to make a smooth driving camper and how to make a quiet driving camper, as well as make it look and feel like a premium home on wheels. All right, so we're gonna start with the exterior of the van. We're gonna start on the passenger side, also known as the camp side. These are power mirrors that fold in automatically. They do have two mirrors within each mirror, so the, the wide mirror on the bottom and the normal mirror on the top. You can adjust both of them, and they do have blind spot indicators. Moving on, we do have a running board with five steel points of contact to the frame, nice and sturdy. There is a light, it's a little hard to see in the daytime, but there is a light that lights up on the running board. As you notice, this is a window van, so main difference of a window van to not a window van is there aren't cutouts specifically for the window. This entire panel is made for the window. So if you compare it to maybe like the uh, Winnebago Travato uh, 59K, you see it's not a window van. There's a cutout for the window. All right, if you shift your focus to the top, we've got a 13 foot Thule awning. As you can see, there is an LED strip that stays on the van. It doesn't move with the awning, so that's kind of nice. It shines directly down instead of on the edge of the awning like you see sometimes with the light shining right in your face. This stays right on the van, so it shines the light nicely down on the ground. So the awning is armless, but it does have leg supports that I would recommend using. You can either put them onto the ground or they go right into this little thing here. There's one in the back that we'll move back to in just a minute. All right, moving down, Behind the running board, you'll see a little hookup right here for propane. So if you want to hook up maybe like a grill or a stove that takes propane, this does have a built-in propane tank that you can control and turn on. So we'll get to that when we get to the off-camp side. All right, and then behind the extra propane hookup that you have here on the campsite, you'll be able to see Integra's version of Jayco's J-Ride, which they call the Hellwig Helper Springs. And what they do is provide a little bit more rigidity to the ride, as well as those rubber mounts that you see absorb a lot of the road's vibration, which again, helps out with that nice smooth ride. All right, now moving back, obviously we have a little window here that we can open. You've got our Ethos um, lettering here. We've got 12 volt hookups right here if you wanna hook up any electronics on the outside. And here's the other support that we talked about in the front. All right, moving on to the back. If you point your direction down here, we've got a little container to put our sewage. We'll get into that in a minute. Below the bumper here, obviously we have a little two inch uh, receiver and both hookups. If you wanted to tow something, I believe the max limit is 3,200 pounds. Kayla's showing you the, um, the drains, the gray and the black. They come out into one, which is pretty nifty. As you can see, the back is pretty plain. There's no ladder, there's no spare tire, um, but we'll get into how Integra made up for it. All right, and if you point your direction up there, we've got a little uh, backup camera. And we're not gonna talk about it too much until we uh, get inside, but if you open up the rear, 
You see we've got 12 volt, a water pump, and a light for when it's dark. Outdoor shower, little compartment if you want to store stuff. We'll talk about the bathroom and the cabinetry when we start talking inside. All right, moving to the off campsite. You'll see where Integra makes up for not having a ladder on the back. This is an extendable retractable ladder from Thule that they include. Magnetic on the top. That part that Kayla's zooming into is uh, what comes off. And it is magnetic, so you don't have to worry about falling off. All right, and we'll show you how. Gotta give it a little tilt. There's little buttons down here that you press in. And then from there, softly and gently collapses into a much more compact version. All right, so moving to a big reason why I wanted either an Integra Ethos or a Jayco Swift is the location of all the hookups. Here you can see it's all centrally located. So if you look at other vans, sometimes maybe there'll be hookups in the middle of the van, some back here, and some even on the inside of the back door, which is super inconvenient. So everything's here. And just for convenience, there's a little light that turns on if you're hooking up at night. All right, so we're gonna start left to right, starting with a cable or TV satellite input, if your campsite has that. 30 amp hookup, got your city water, your black tank flush, you've got a couple 12 volt hookups. And this is a plug-in for an external solar panel that you can use in addition to the solar that comes on top of the roof already. So I have not memorized the specifications for the solar panel on the roof, but I will leave all the specs on the screen right now. So on top of the roof, in addition to the solar panel, um, Integra was nice enough to give us three Thule crossbars along with that 13,500 BTU AC and the WineGuard uh, Wi-Fi extender. All right, and below our hookups, obviously we've got the drain, and this is the exhaust of the generator that comes pre-installed underneath the van that draws fuel directly from the van's gas tank. All right, so moving up, we've got the exhaust for the Truma. We'll get into this when we talk more on the inside about it. All right, and then if you shift your direction down here, this is the propane that we talked about on the campsite. This is where you fill it and turn it on and off. This is just the exhaust for the actual van itself. This is obviously just uh, where you fill up. We uh, actually rented a van in Alaska where the door opened the opposite way, but you could only open it with having the door open. So in those situations, when you're getting gas, you have to have the driver door completely open in order to fill your fuel. Here you don't. All right, and finishing up the exterior of the van underneath the hood, we have a nine speed transmission paired with the Pentastar 3.6 liter V6, rides like a dream. All right, now for what you've probably all been waiting for, let's check out the interior of this thing. Come check out our crib. Okay, welcome to the interior of the 2024 Integra Ethos. So first thing to note is how comfortable these leather seats are. Nice, plush, white, perforated, I would say ventilated, but I don't want you to get confused as if they're cooling, because they're not, but they are super comfortable. The armrest is adjustable, so you can set it at whatever height. All you have to do is just scroll along this little thing and it changes how high or low the armrest is. One thing to note is both sides have it and i make mention of that because our van in alaska did not have that on the passenger side incredibly annoying brand new upgraded steering wheel from the previous generation one huge improvement from the previous generation is the info center here um, built-in android auto built-in tom tom navigation which does show up on the little uh, speedometer area here. So another cool thing about the info center is that it has the option to create multiple unique profiles. So Kayla can have her own profile when she's driving. I can have my own profile when I'm driving, obviously unique to our phones. And that means we can have our own home screen, our own applications, our own home tiles. Everything is unique to us in the info center. Sorry, I won't spend too much time on the uh, info center here because I know camera's frame rate is gonna make it all wonky, so we'll move on. One of Kayla's favorite parts, wireless charger. One thing that we're not really fond of is how low these cup holders are. Um, there are things that you can 3D print to have something maybe up in this area, which we might look into, but there are cup holders way down here on the doors. All right, and then one nice little safety feature is the lane assist. So if you are getting a little complacent, which you shouldn't be driving a rig like this, but, if you are getting a little complacent, this does have lane assist. So if you do 
maybe venture off on the line or so, it'll correct you. So down here, there is an emergency start just in case for whatever reasons your, your battery goes dead. Um, there, it does have a safety feature where it saves just enough juice to connect both batteries, that being the engine battery and the house battery. It, it makes a connection between the two, just enough to get it started and back on the road again. So one other hate it or love it feature that this van has that you can turn on and off, which currently we have off, is automatic high beams. So if it detects an oncoming car, it'll turn the high beams off and once the car passes, high beams are back on automatically. The reason why we have it turned off is because sometimes it'll detect an oncoming car, but really what it is, is a reflection off of a sign. All right, so moving along to the passenger side, we got a couple inputs here, USB-C, USB, a little 12 volt cigarette lighter. Kayla is going to demonstrate our glove boxes. And I say that plurally, all right? So we got one on the bottom, nice little area there, and a nice little area up on top. Now let's check out the back. So the only downfall with this is it doesn't lock into place. And then a safety feature with the van is if the seat is in any position other than facing forward, the van cannot be put into drive. So starting in the rear of the cab, we have some storage up here above our heads just for little things. Then we also got storage up here and this bag up here has all of the window coverings, which are for the whole driver's side, as well as we have one that buttons here for the slider. So then we'll start in the back. This is something I really wanted. It's a cool little table. John can unload all his footage at the end of every day, make a little food here. And then also underneath, the nice thing when you're unloading all your footage, you got your USB ports as well as your regular um, electrical power here. So then you can see we got our nice little shade. So when we wanna get some air, we don't wanna worry about any bugs, especially out west. All right, so moving on back to the kitchen area. We got quite a bit of storage here. Got a little floor one. We've added our little odds and ends drawer. And then we moving over here, our main kitchen storage. Pretty good amount of storage. And then we have our convection oven microwave. Pretty decent size. We got all the different convection, grill, roast, defrost. So we don't always have to stick to our Lunchables and Gogurt, but we probably still will. And then we got our fridge right here. It's the fridge and a small little freezer option as well. And as you can see, it does currently open this way. However, it does have the option that we're gonna look into moving the opening over to here. So that way we can open it this way to make it more convenient. Moving on, we have this little pull out cutting board. Doesn't fully come out, but nice little station. Prep some food. All right, and then we have, this is a wireless charging pad. It also pops up, has two regular outlets, USB and USB-C. Nice little convenience for when we put our toaster or coffee maker out, pops right back down. And then this is actually just the window, pops open, has a screen so it stays attached. And then this does come off. You can open the whole window, pass stuff outside, and then button it back up, close the window back up. All right, and then this is the Dometic Propane dual cooktop here. Lift this back up, close it back in. Got our nice little sink right here. All right, and this also came with the van. This is our removable JBL Bluetooth speaker. You can just push right here, put it inside outside, and then just hooks right back in. And then also all of the windows, we have these nice little blackout shades. We've added this paper towel holder here. Also light up here, just turn all the lights, well the switch up here. Now this was a main thing for me with picking out the van, I wanted to make sure things weren't gonna fall out of the cabinet. So the nice thing with the Integra has these nice latches so you can hear it clasp, you know things aren't gonna open while you're driving down the road. Quite a decent amount of storage in all of these. These three right here are just for up front. As you can see, fits our little appliances pretty well. They are sloped down, however, this is carpeted. So it's all very nice to make sure your things aren't gonna get damaged or break. And again, they all latch. All right, so we'll go down here. This is going to be your main power shutoff, which will let you know you can plug in any of your electronics, have all the appliances going. As you can see, this light will go off slowly to let you know everything is shut off in your RV. Flip this back on. We'll come up here to our main control hub. You can hit your on button. This turns every light on at once, your main power. And then you can monitor all your levels here for all of your tanks, as well as your propane extend or retract your awning. You can check your generator as well as your battery voltage. 
control any of the lights again here. And then this final one will let you know your AC temperature. All right, so continuing to the rear of the cab, up here we have our exhaust fan, which will help with cooking as well as our ventilation. We have the 13,500 BTU AC. John's gonna be freezing me out every night. And then we have our little smoke alarm. Also came with a TV. To pull this down, it can swivel out. We can put it outside if we want to, and then just goes right back into place. So when you're driving, you don't have to worry about it coming out. Again, like I said, a lot of storage. This is the electronics one. You can have your cable hook up here. We have a little DVD player we added. Still all nice and carpeted. And then these in the back here, there's gonna be two on each side. Again, all latched. These are actually a little bit bigger than the ones up front in the kitchen, but still very nice. Holds all your stuff. All right, so moving on down here by John's feet, we have our lagoon table. So it has little brackets here. You can pull these out, slide it out. And then we have, these are the brackets. So this one slides down in here. And then there's these little knobs. So you tighten it to make sure it's in place. And you have one that'll go on top. Again, tighten it. Makes it so you can't swivel a certain way. And then you line up the holes. And you can certainly raise and lower it. Again, you can tighten all of these so it can either swivel to be in front of you or you can keep it stationary. So you have the lagoon mount here. And then with the Winnebago's, they had another lagoon mount up here, but you could not have both the lagoon mount and the flip up table. So we liked the option of having both rather than having to constantly move the table from one spot to the other and only having one table. So again, back here, both sides of the van have shades, go all the way down, another one over here. And then we also have the windows on this side as well as this side. So we get opposing slides to get some airflow in here. Back here, if you have more than just you two, there's these little cutouts here as well as back here. There's some seat belts that pop up if you have some passengers. All right, so continuing on, we have the option of two twin beds. We can also put these two together to make one big bed, which we'll show you right now. So these two, this is a pass through little portion that magnets to the other side. And then we pull this over, push it down in the middle you got one big bed. And you also have the option, you can use these as a little backrest or a pillow if you want as well, which these are the back cushions for this side. So moving on back here, we also have outlets that are on both sides of the cabin. And then we have these little lights. So we have one mode blue light, as well as you press and hold, you get a regular reading light. This is gonna be our Truma system. This is gonna be for our furnace as well as the hot water. And this can be powered with either electric or propane or both simultaneously. And then right here, we also have this little mini control panel so we don't have to get out of bed at night. We can turn all the lights on and off and we can also retract and extend our awning. And you also have nice master light on and off. All right, and then you're gonna wanna get this out of the way because you'll see moving the bed with that in the way you can't extend it too high. So you can lift up under here. This is the main system, it locks in. This part lifts up. And then back here underneath, this is also going to be your emergency water fill for portable water if you can't get to any hookups outside. All right, and then we got all of our interior storage here. We're also gonna be looking into a hydraulic system to put on each side of this so we can use open it hands-free. And we have quite a bit of storage under here for any additional things that can't go in the up above cabinets. All right, and then continuing over to this side, this is gonna be your access points. On this side, we have our Truma system. Then on this side, you're gonna have your water filter as well as the other plumbing, water shutoffs, and then the electrical. All right, so this is our CO2 monitor. We have our heat vent here for the furnace. And then you open this up. This is going to be our water controls, putting it either in city mode, filling it, or normal, and then winterizing the lines. Moving over here, this is gonna be our circuit breaker. All right, so as you know, we rented our van in Alaska which had the middle cabin bathroom. Didn't really care for it because it took away from all the kitchen space. So we opted in this van to have a full rear wet bath. With that comes obviously a door, which the nice thing about this van, we have one door, take this off, slides over. However, with the Tolero, it had two doors, so they had to come together. You heard them clamping when you were driving. Just nice to have one door to worry about. 
slide it back into place. We don't have to worry about it. All right, so with the wet bath, got both doors open up here. As you can see right here in the door, we have the hidden toilet paper spot so it doesn't get wet while you're showering. Medicine cabinet opens up here, get pretty decent amount of storage in there. This part is going to be the sink. Flips down the drain in the back. This pops up as your tap. Back, as you can see, drains out in the back so you don't have to worry about any water getting out. All right, so then the shower curtain goes all the way around here. We have an exhaust fan here with a little button. We also have the shower head here has the off and on button so we can conserve water. Speaking of conserving water, unlike at home where you have to turn your shower on, starts out cold, gets warm before you get in, this comes equipped with the shower miser system which circulates the water internally within itself and then will light up blue here to let you know the shower is ready to go at your desired temperature so you can get in. Then we obviously have our toilet here which has its own black tank soft closing lid. So continuing to this side, this is going to be the whole storage side, which has the full wardrobe. We have three drawers. In the Travato, they only have two, but open this up. Here we have our full wardrobe with some organizer and the clothes hangers. Is still carpeted back here. This is solid wood and that has a glossy protective coating. So if anything gets wet with the shower, you can just wipe it off, move on with your day. But again, we have three drawers here all pretty decent size to help you store all your stuff. And that wraps up our wet bath. The only downside we have with the bathroom being in the back is with our Alaska van, we had the option, our table was at the back of the van. That made it so when we were eating and backed up to a nice location, we could just open the doors, enjoy the fresh air. Other than that, gives you a lot more room in the interior of your van, having it all in the back. And that's gonna finish our complete tour of the 2024 Integra Ethos. We hope you love it as much as we do. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you're interested in watching us put it to use, feel free to subscribe to our channel. My name is John. I'm KP. Thanks for watching. Later.